presumption that you're all absolute novice carvers. Well, this other this is the head. I think the, the body for that. Yeah, that, there. that bird there needs a head. It's over there on the <laughs> table, on top of that green. Uh... Yeah, I I think uh, some of the guys that needed this the most, they're not here tonight. This is mine. Who took oh. my head? I think I did. <laughs> so I Which might, let me ask you this. How long does it take you to get the newsletter out? And what I'm getting at is if some of the guys that I know really need the help, they're not here tonight. <laughs> and if it were helpful to them, if they want to come out to my house, you know, they, if you can get the newsletter out a little earlier, put a little blurb in there, you know, if you want some help with your painting. Or I, some of the guys might, st I suspect a couple of them are still hung up on the carving. I mean, that's just a suspicion on my part, and I wouldn't doubt it. And if they need some help, they're more than welcome to come out to my house if they want to come out, we could set something up. Maybe, you know, just, just as a thought, if you could get the newsletter out a little earlier. I'm not saying like tomorrow. But... You mean me? Yeah. Who, who puts the newsletter out? <laughs> oh, Tom does. <laughs> I'm right. the lonely librarian. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at you. <laughs> what do you think? I think you're videotaping it. I am. <laughs> Oh, he's he's going to get it all on record. Yeah, yeah it's because I, I think some of the guys are kind of still hung up on the carving. And, but if they wanted to come out to my house, you know, a couple of them, if any of them wanted to come out there, we would have set something up. I mean, I'm retired. I got nothing but time until fishing season comes and then forget it. Anyway. Uh, so, okay, so like I said, I, uh, I'm going to move this down to the lowest common denominator for a lot of you who don't need this, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. Uh, and I'm making the presumption that everybody's working with acrylics, you guys are doing the oil, go ahead. Uh, one problem almost everybody has this time of year, your paints are going to dry on you real quick. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to get yourself either plastic or metal disposable pie tin. Put that in there. Um, uh, you did it wrong. Put this in here. You can keep your paint for days now if you do this. Put a saturated napkin down there. Put your pallet tray in there. And then you take another one when you're through painting and just lay it on the top. Because during the heating season, it's always going to dry up on you. Basically, real simple. Uh, <clears throat> if you paint it just solid color, that's what it's going to look like just solid color. <clears throat> you want to add some painted in texturing, like what you see on there. It's kind of a, you want to get something of a modeled look, trying to simulate a feathered look to it. Um, I 
want you to start out, just use, you're going to use raw sienna. And I'm using uh, cad yellow light. If, if you look at a lot of the photographs where where the neck comes down to the body, where you, uh, just where you get into the white at the shoulder area and the breast, you see a little bit of yellow in there. It's not dominant in all of them, but uh, a lot of the photographs, you can kind of pick it up in there. And just to get the, uh, the base coat color, What, what you'll need are uh, raw sienna, burnt sienna, uh, some cad red light, cad orange light. Cad yellow light and uh, warm white. And if you want, what you can do, you can highlight some of your feathers. Uh, basically, all the white areas are, I've used warm white, but then you can put feather highlights in there to kind of pump it up a little bit. You can use uh, uh, titanium white to give you a little more color. And the approach I take to this is pretty basic and simple. For those of uh, you guys who have an airbrush, you can airbrush a base coat on. I think I'm gonna, normally I would, I like to use uh, flow medium and especially during this time of year when you're heating, I like to use a retarder slow down, help slow down the drying a little bit because you do some wet blending. Everybody who knows what the retarder and the flow medium is and how to use it. Okay. <laughs> I rather thought so. Everybody here knows what, what the P designation is on a tube of paint? Nobody here knows what it is. The P numbers, what it means. Yeah, 
great. You go to the head of the class. Is there, is, there, is there anyone else that knows that? I mean, the numbers in the front of the. Yeah. Okay, here. Uh, warm white is comprised of PW, which stands for pigment white 6, and pigment yellow 42. So if you combine those two, you end up with warm white. Every tube of paint has a P number. That's your, your pigment, pigment composition. So if you wanted to make up a certain color, that's all you have to do is combine those two pigment numbers in the proper proportion, and you'll end up with what's in this tube. Uh, like your warm white, if you combine it with, if you took pigment PW6, which is probably uh, uh, titanium white, I'm guessing, it's going to be pretty close to it. Yeah, PW6. So warm white is PW6 and P, uh, PY42, which pigment yellow 42. So if you took PW6 and took the yellow 42 and combine it, so in other words, if you had, uh, if you wanted uh, some warm white and you didn't have it in the tube, by doing that, <coughs> combining it with the yellow, you could pretty closely approximate that. And you can do that virtually with any of these paints here. Uh, I'm going to give you the short version of this. And did you gesso your bird? These are gessoed, yeah, they're sealed. And uh, I just used uh, Kurtz, what's that, what's that stuff, TK. Kurt? TK's, TK's yeah. I used uh, TK's on it, and then just gessoed them. Essentially, the procedure, yeah? After you use tea case, do you sand it in here? No. Okay, it works. No, it's yeah. yeah, pretty good. Just gesso. Essentially, uh, what I'm doing is I, I use real thin wash coats mostly because If you make it too opaque, yeah, it's true, you could paint it a lot less time, but, but then you get this kind of a hard look. You can get a nice softer look if you use wash coats and numerous wash coats because you get a nice in-depth color. But another thing is by using thin wash coats, uh, if you, if you look at this, you're trying to simulate something of a feather finish in there. And you can utilize one of the benefits that you get out of acrylics is you can put numerous wash coats and still see what's coming through from underneath. So you can actually simulate a feather look and then blend it all in with wash coats and still let it show through. Everybody got that? You all know that. And the approach that I take with these is just start laying on your base coat color, which is primarily sienna.
and using a flat brush or sometimes they call it a shader. Initially with no particular pattern, just start laying on some, what you're trying to do is simulate some feathers in there. Pass it over. Light hits it differently in different areas. Yeah, I didn't bring all my nice color photos, but there's, I have some here. Well, if you look at this, you, you could see the difference in the color on the head, you know, depending how the light hits it and everything. It's, it's like sitting in a room with a bunch of bald guys or half bald guys, you know, light glances <laughs> off. Of them like mine. I, I got your beat. That's why I wear a hat. Oh, I think I got you all beat. <laughs> yeah, initially this is going to look like just a big blob, and it's going to look kind of yucky and icky. But as you keep working your way through it, You'll be getting closer and closer to where you want to be. And a lot of times, I don't, uh, I don't necessarily paint the whole bird. I just. Lay the color on randomly like that. That's cute. And when you're doing this, uh, you know, you can give free reign to your own artistic interpretation, like uh, take a bird like this where, you know, I got his head pulled back and his lower neck is thrust out like that. You could lighten that up quite a bit, you know, like where the light would be hitting it more, uh, areas on top of the head. So you're doing that feather pattern and 
white. Yeah, and, and you, could do, you could do some shading and shadowing mm -hmm. as you're going along, yep. yeah. I would, you know, naturally want to make it, try to make it a little darker underneath there. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the top where normal lighting conditions, you know, make it a little lighter, right. make it look a little more natural. But I, I just keep laying it on more or less randomly, you know, controlled randomness. Uh, but you don't want to do it like you're painting walls, you know, where every, everything is just a monotone color. Mm -hmm. you, you want to break it up a little bit and try and simulate something of a feather pattern in there. And I could sit here for the next hour and a half doing this and waste everybody's time, but you can see where this is going. And if you if you look at this one, you know, you can look at it, and I'm not really done with this one yet. I can touch it up a little bit. Uh, I say I worked on this one today. When I get down to this area down here where uh, the neck joins the, uh, you get down to the breast and the shoulder area. Essentially what I did was uh, take an old beat up flat ended brush. Uh, take an old worn out one like this one here. It works really great for this. And what I did in this area here was you do some wet blending in there. Everybody knows what I'm talking about. And that'll soften the edges for you a little bit mm -hmm. so you don't have a harsh line in there. purposely going to go way back here. And, oops, I went too far. So what are you going to do? Wipe it off. Wipe it off. <laughs> you got it. Well, everybody don't know that. They go, oh my God, I screwed it up. You know? So just take your brush and mop it up. A lot of times, especially for beginners and at the novice level, uh, Everything about painting is traumatic for them. It's like, even if they do a credible job in the painting, I mean in the carving, they get into the painting and they're like snowballed, you know? And that's really probably the easiest thing. If you screw up when you're carving, the wood's gone, you know? And painting, you can always throw more paint at it and fix it. Good as new. But anyway, that's essentially that's the technique I use on the head uh, and the neck area. Um, I don't know what else to tell you. You guys are all of you here have done enough that there isn't much more I could tell you really. Uh, how far you want to go toward making it a realistic looking bird, you know, that's up to you. You can keep refining it and refining it and refining it. Um, 
I stay pretty simple like that one there. Anybody got any questions or <coughs> comments, criticisms? On that, that color, it's a P6, then you said like P42 will make that color? Yeah. Is that like equal parts? Uh, no, no, not, no, okay. no. You have to, you have to, you have to just keep experiment going. with okay. it. Yeah. There's so I but there's, there's charts it's, that are it's a good, yeah, it's a good insight <laughs> Because if you if you want a certain color, right. and uh, I, I don't, you can't always get a color you want out of a tube, you know, a so-called designer color. So a lot of times you're going to have to formulate your own colors, and which is not <laughs> as difficult. As it seems, here I'll give you the. Here, one thing that I found useful for myself: get some tempered hardboard, and if you if it's a, a bird that you've done, and you think, well, I might do another one sometime in the future, I make these boards up, and I make up my color samples and put them on here, and then I like this was for a kestrel. Uh, this is for a house sparrow, and I put notes on there with the, the colors that I've used. Uh, must have been, oh, bluebird, eastern bluebird, and they're permanent, you know, and I keep them. And it, it says, you know, in a couple of years, if I want to do another one, uh, and I'll put things like on there, like the first wash the second wash, the third wash, and it, it helps me get a feel for it and you know how I develop the intensity of the color and everything and just make notes. You might find that helpful. But you can, if you wanted to, I'll give you an example here real quick. Uh, Got a picture there. You know, maybe maybe you just didn't really like the color that you got right away. <coughs> let, me, let me see that. I just barely put any on there at all. You can see how it kind of pumps the color up a little bit. I can't see it. Oh. Uh, what do I need in there? Hmm? got you know somebody else's predetermined paint schedule and you're just fishing around looking for colors how's that look uh, it's, you know the farther back you get it looks better yeah, well, it's, it needs to be a little but on the other hand here huh? yeah just right just like all your carving sit right on
We'll use some real, uh, real thin washes to kind of blend it all in. And if you look at this one, you can see where uh, I've tried to lay some feathers out on there. And what I've done is take, uh, just pretty much a straightforward paint job. You know, just rely on your, whatever you have for photo reference. Use that if you got it. Use what you got available. So. Good timing, it's almost beer 30. Is it? Good. I'm ready. You know, hey, Bob, are you, are you done yet? I'm done. <laughs> if, if Thanks, you Google. Bob.